Oh crap, it's Tuesday. Dang. Uh, Alan for Jake. Some type of power saw for cutting PVC pipe, an electric sander, PVC itself. You're gonna need flicker lights. The LEDs that we're using come from Lighthouse LED, uh, lighthouseled.com. These are five millimeter pre-wired flicker candle LEDs. Now, these are a little bit different from some of the LEDs we've used in other tutorials. They look exactly the same, but what's cool about these is that right in here, can you see that? Right there, underneath that heat shrink, there is a really small circuit, which has a built-in flicker mode. So all you have to do is apply 12 volt power to the light, and it's got a natural kind of candle flicker in it. You don't need any kind of controller or any special stuff. Just wire it up, um, and it, you've got an instant candle. Now, what makes this great is that if you want to do large clusters of candles, huge groups of candles like we have here at Dark Hour, every one of them will be flickering independently on its own. And again, no special controllers needed. Just run your 12 volt power to all of your lights. Now, the one thing with these LEDs is that polarity does matter. So make sure before you wire everything up and bury it in hot glue and do a lot of crazy stuff like that, um, that you've got it wired up the right way. See? Your odds are 50-50. I actually got that the right time. Um, I don't know. There, can you see that now? It's kind of bright in here. Built-in flicker. All we did was power it up, and we've got our candlelight right there. So these are really handy, 48 cents a piece. You're also gonna need a heat gun, a hot glue gun with plenty of hot glue, some white spray paint, and for those of you who are very detail oriented, uh, some saddle tan, our favorite uh, leather stain. All right, let's get started. Now that we've got the PVC cut to our proper candle length, we're going to take it to the sander. We're going to do a couple different things on the sander. First of all, we're just going to lightly run down the side so that we can get all of the labeling off of the PVC. Um, even if you paint it, sometimes with the light coming from the inside, this will show through under the paint. So it's easy just to sand it off, make sure it's not there anymore. The other thing we're going to do is shape the end of the PVC so that it looks more like a naturally melted candle. Now we're still going to clean up these edges a little bit and there's going to be some more detailing with the heat gun which I'll show you next. But this is one of the areas where you can get a little bit creative with your candles depending on where you're going to put them in the scene or what angle they're going to be viewed from. Um, you can cut this a little bit different. The way I normally do it is cut a heavy dip on one side so that you kind of have this background right here um, and you'll see why in just a little bit. But uh, for our purpose, this would be the viewing side of the candle. From this side, it's still gonna look a lot like a pipe kind of plain for now. But uh, pick the side that you want it to be viewed from the most, and that's where you wanna do the most uh, sanding and cutting as far as shaping the PVC. Um, I don't know if you can see on there, there are ridges right here still. I'm gonna clean that up with the sander, and uh, then we'll go on to the next step. There, a little bit softer edge, not quite as stabby. Um, and now we will proceed to make it look more like wax with uh, shaping and uh, glue dripping. 
Now to give this a little bit more of a natural bend, we're going to heat it up with the heat gun just enough so that the plastic becomes flexible and we can kind of bend it inward. Then we want to cool it off so that it holds that shape. See now that it's warmed up, it's a little bit softer and you can kind of curl it over on itself like that just like wax would collapse okay just to show you kind of the shape variation this is the first candle that I made bent the plastic this is the second one now this one has not been touched with the heat gun yet this was done just on the sander I rounded the edges like that so you can see the different shapes and variations that you can get. If you're doing a lot of candles, you want to break this up. Do lots of different uh, shapes uh, and variations in the way that the wax would be falling forward in a real candle. Um, kind of like snowflakes, no two candles are going to melt exactly the same. There's going to be minor imperfections, although um, the outcome is going to be pretty much identical. get really creative with the way you do your sanding and your heating just make really organic shapes natural textures there now that looks kind of like maybe the wick had slid to one side over the other causing the wax to melt at a faster rate and that's what you want you want all your candles to kind of have that look um, but uh, slight variations um, the next step is going to be taking the hot glue gun and just adding beads of hot glue right around the edge. You want to just follow the lip of the plastic all the way around so that you kind of cover that sharp looking edge there and just get a nice bead of glue all the way around. to insert our LED into the pipe. Um, the height inside the pipe where the LED is going to be um, really kind of makes a difference as far as where it looks like the light from your candle flames coming from. Um, you want to be below any exposed point so you don't want the LED poking up like this looking like an LED. You need to be down here in the base. Um, for one, uh, obviously, yes, the LED won't be exposed, so people won't see that it's just an LED light. But two, if your candle is actually melting like this, um, it shows that it's been burning a while and your wick would be down low past all this melted point. Um, the other thing that this does, if you're using thin PVC pipe especially, um, this will actually glow through the pipe. Very much like a real candle, you'll see a little bit of transparency with the light right around this area here. Um, just above where you stick the bulb. Uh, the other thing that you want to bear in mind is depending on the length of your candle, you may have to add extensions on here before you wire it in. If you want to make a candle that's a foot tall, you're going to have to add extra wire onto this. Most of ours are pretty short, um, and so the six inch leads that come on the LED are plenty. Um, also, when you mount the LED low, you'll wind up with uh, plenty of a tail sticking out the bottom so that you can wire it up in your seam. Now, to mount the LED in here, we're going to use hot glue. Um, hot glue is essentially plastic. It's going to bond to the PVC and kind of encase the wire. Um, see how I did that? Just a nice little blob of hot glue. And make sure that LED is seated in there just right. Um, the more vertical, the more natural it's going to look. Um, once that once that glue dries, that LED will be nice and snug in there in place. All right, so as I mentioned earlier, this last part is for you super detail-oriented people or just depending on where you want to put your candles. Um, as you can see, this has the LED attached. We have our hot glue wax dripping down, um, and it looks 
pretty well candle-like already. Um, I would be okay putting this in a show um, as is. I think it looks great. Uh, it represents a candle, no problem. However, if you're going to be in a display, maybe outside, maybe a home haunt, front yard, maybe a, a waiting area or a common area, somewhere where people can really look and study stuff for a lot longer period of time or under a lot brighter light, you can punch this up and make it look even better. The first thing that we're going to do is just give them a nice white coat of spray paint and eliminate kind of, you see this PVC was stored somewhere where it got some paint overspray on it and that's the little hot spot that I put on it earlier when we were heating it up with the heat gun to melt the plastic. So the first part of this is just going to be giving the whole thing a nice even coat of uh, white spray paint just so that it's all unified and it all looks like white wax without question. Now you can see a little bit better already. The clear of the hot glue has come together. Now everything looks like the same color of wax. Um, you're going to let these dry and then we'll go on to our last detailing step. All right, now that the spray paint is dry, we're on to the last step of detailing our candles, which is going to be to antique them with everybody's favorite stain, saddle tan. Ooh. I know those of you that watch this channel regularly have seen Alan do this a hundred times and I'm just going to do it again and take a little bit of saddle tan and make sure it gets into all the cracks and crevices up there on your candle. All the edges of where the hot glue comes in contact with the PVC and just get a nice even brushed coat all over inside just go as deep as you can so that you have a nasty looking candle then you'll want to take paper towels and just wipe all that down smooth wipe off all your excess stain did i mention alan has done this for many projects he could probably put it better into words than I could. I am a tech guy. Alan is a creative scenic and monster maker. He's a lot better wiping junk off of things than I am. Paper towel there to kind of get something. But there you go. Once you get your candle wiped down, you'll want to let that stain dry. And now you have a natural grimy look. And you'll notice that uh, the wax is much more pronounced now. It, it punches it. That contrast of dark and light colors is going to show up a lot better in a dimly lit environment uh, than if you had left it all the same color. Even right now under bright lights, you can see what a difference that makes. To the candle. Now here's a few examples of uh, the candles here in Dark Hour. See inside this crypt we've got these nice built-in shelves that have lots of candles. Notice the fatter ones here, these are actually real wax candles and all we've done is drill a hole down the middle to sink the LED into and mix it up with some of our PVC versions that we just made and you see that they go together nicely. I'll also point out, you notice that between the top molding here and the bottom, the bottom has a little bit extra because all of these are on one piece. All of our wiring, get in there, lots and lots of wiring underneath. But this entire thing is built as an insert. more candles here on the organ in our cathedral set these are all pvc 
and you can see they're also secured in place just using hot glue around the base and in this crypt we have this broken down half wall which has been lined with candles lots and lots of them now we got kind of experimental with these um, the tops here this actually is hot glue just like everything else we did but if you get up close you notice that slight texture change right in there all the dripping wax we use on this is actually silicone caulk cheap plain white silicone caulk um, and we used it to embed the wires in because this is such an exposed piece and guests have to walk around both sides of it um, it was going to be really tricky to hide the wiring for this we didn't run it inside the wall because the texturing on the wall had to be done first the wall has a foam texture on it um, so it's kind of departmental layers uh, it was built by the carpenters and then the scenic guys made it look like brick and then the tech team came in and we added the candles so all that excessive wax is what hides the wires and if you look closely you can kind of see where some are still exposed however you also notice the bright contrast between the white wax and the dark dingy wall that they're on that's important because in the dark that contrast is a lot more prominent and you don't even notice those exposed wires in between candles because your brain puts two and two together in this set we have actually put our candles into a candelabra here um, and as you can tell i'm standing about three feet away holding the camera and you can't see any wires or anything um, keep that in mind um, in the past i've caused myself a lot of undue strife trying to make everything detail perfect and hidden um, you've just kind of got to learn where to draw the lines on what's actually going to show up in a haunted house show light -like condition and what's not if you get really really close you can see that all of our cables are actually zip tied to this candelabra and they all meet up Let's see if i can get the camera behind here see they all meet up and come together to one main line that goes down the back um, they're all painted black like the candelabra we use black zip ties um, but as you can tell just from taking a couple steps away no one's ever going to notice that so there's no need to just rack your brain trying to uh, hide that kind of minuscule uh, details something else that i'll point out on this this is the only instance of these candles where we did not hot glue them uh, or silicone them into place um, these candle holders actually have these bendable metal leaves which we were able to squeeze on um, so they sit in there pretty snug so now you've built a bunch of these candles and you've put them all over your scene but you're thinking to yourself jake these look awesome but they don't light up the room they don't put out enough light for anyone to see anything well the second part of this tutorial is that i'm going to help show you how you can put lights like this in your set but still illuminate everything in a very realistic manner so I'm sure that by now you have some lights inside your haunt. Um, maybe you have a pin spot LED, tiny LEDs like this, or a little bit larger LEDs. Um, this is from Dark Light, uh, or Gantum rather. A uh, little bit larger LEDs, or maybe even clamp lights. Some other type of spotlight, floodlight, something to light up the area in your show. These all work really well for that. The problem is, is that these don't fit in a haunt scene. Um, in the world of theater, there is a term called a practical lighting effect. A practical light is a realistic source of light that you are likely to find in a realistic environment, or in this case, the scene you're creating. A candle is a practical lighting instrument. A lantern is a practical lighting fixture. A table lamp is a practical lighting fixture. Maybe you have a, a TV screen. Maybe you go through a, a haunted house or an asylum or something and there's a TV in the background. TV screen puts off light. That's a practical source of light. Non-practical lighting fixtures or theatrical lighting fixtures are stuff like these that we just looked at. The LED spotlights, the, the clamp floodlights or parkants, whatever you're using there. Um, 
those are light sources that just don't belong. You wouldn't go through an asylum and see a clamp light. You wouldn't go through a cemetery and see a clamp light. Um, this stuff just doesn't fit. It's not stuff you see in real environments uh, in everyday life. An LED spotlight is not a practical lighting fixture. Giant Martin Atomic 3000 strobe lights and LED source bores are not practical fixtures. They are theatrical fixtures. A giant black light, or really any black light, is not a practical fixture. It is a theatrical fixture. For this example, we're going to use our little uh, LED floodlight here from Gantam Dark Light and also from Gantam the Dark Light Flicker. Can you guys see that? The camera doesn't want to focus. So this is just a little inline box that you can plug in line to your 12 volt lights and it creates a flicker effect. Um, once again, this is from Gansom Dark Light. There's a lot of companies that make a lot of different variations of this, not just 12 volt, but also 110. Um, flicker boxes, storm boxes, things like that, um, that do the exact same thing with 110 volt lights. Uh, and you can shop around. There's a lot of different places that have them. All right, so as you can see, our candle is there, candling. Um, not putting out too much light, but looking awesome. So now we'll take the LED floodlight and plug into the dark light flicker. And if we use that to light up the surrounding area, you see the light is also flickering. It looks like the candle is lighting the room, but it's not. So while your customers can see your beautiful practical candles or table lamps or whatever else you're using, we hide the true light source somewhere in the scene and the two come together nicely putting off a beautiful effect. The light flickering on the wall and around the candles and once again it comes from the LED spotlight which is hidden right up here under this ledge so as the guests walk this direction it is completely out of their sight. All they see is the candles and the light that they believe is being put off by the candles. All right, we covered a lot of ground today, but uh, I hope I got the gears turning, and I hope you're going to start uh, spitting out some ideas for cool new ways to light your haunt. Couldn't have done it better myself. Go make stuff.